Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. I'm Kevin Harned with Tim Laird, and this is a special edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're at the annual Green Egg Fest in Louisville, where three top chefs are going to compete. They're going head to head, making an entire meal from appetizers to desserts, all on the grill. It's a Secrets of Bluegrass Chef showdown at the Egg Fest, and it starts right now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Big Green Egg Fest. It's a hot night out here at Brownsboro Hardware and Paint, and it's about to get even hotter. That's right, Kevin, because we have three top chefs who fired up the grills for a fierce competition. That's just about to begin. Competing this year, returning champion Mark Ford from Anoush Bistro. He won the last two Egg Fest showdowns. Can he complete the three-peat tonight? Well, it won't be easy, Tim, because he's up against Chef Reed Johnson from Wiltshire at the Speed Museum. Reed has deep roots in Owensboro, and he's certainly no stranger to the grill. And our third chef is Henry Wesley from 8-Up Elevated Drinkery and Kitchen. This is his second time competing in our showdown here, so he's very aware of what lies ahead. These chefs take this very seriously. There's even some bannering going back and forth uh, uh, on social media between the chefs because they really want to go for the win. They're in it to win it. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it all comes out. In fact, they have to make all of the dishes presented on the green egg. Each chef will have 90 minutes and two green eggs to prepare three dishes, an appetizer, entree, and dessert, all on the big green egg. And they're about to receive their mystery ingredients that they are required to cook with. It's time to get cooking right now. Tim Laird has made his way onto the stage where the green eggs are all fired up. Timmy? Yes, Kevin, I'll tell you what, the competition is definitely underway, and I'm here with a two-time reigning champion looking for a three-peat. How you doing, Chef? I'm doing well. How are you? Tell me about the uh, mystery ingredients on the first dish. All right, so we got semi-boneless quail, which is always fun to use. These things cook pretty quick, perfect for an appetizer. They gave us some quail eggs we're going to fry up as well. Uh, they, Cisco gave us some beautiful mushrooms. We went ahead and roasted those on the grill chopped them up and made a stuffing that we're going to fill that quail with. Wow, Chef, what do you have on the grill so far? All right, we got some onions, peppers, uh, already charred some peppers, some corn. Basically, I'm getting a lot of stuff done for later on, so we call this in the industry mise en place. That's right, and already over here I see some uh, cooked ingredients. Yeah, we got some corn over here already, and uh, that'll be for a little salad with our quail. Chef, do you have any ideas for your uh, what you're going to do for the entree and dessert? All right, entree, they gave us this really awesome prime bone-in ribeye. Um, I'm roasting off the peppers and the onions. We're going to make a little sauce with that. I'm uh, going to do some potatoes, and other than that, I'm still kind of running it through my mind. Thanks, Chef. Thanks Good luck. luck. All right, I'm now joining uh, Henry Wesley from uh, 8 Up, who's actually been here before, and he's ready to come back. And uh, you almost won it last year, and I know you're coming back this year for the win. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for it, man. I'm giving it my all this year. Hopefully, I, I learned from my mistakes last year and bring out a few, uh, a few little uh, things that can help me out. So I'm, I'm looking forward to coming out with a win this year, Jim. Can you give us a little sneak peek of what you're going to be doing as far as uh, the three uh, items? So. Uh, we just now got this uh, beautiful looking quail in, so I'm probably going to do an heirloom tomato a watermelon salad with some quail breast on there to add a little protein. Uh, the second course, uh, I'm trying not to overshadow that delicious Cisco beef that they brought us, man. So that uh, nice, delicious, dry-aged ribeye. Uh, for dessert, I'm doing some pineapple upside-down cake with gooseberries uh, oh. and maraschino cherries. So hopefully that everything adds all in and we have a great time today. Uh, I'll tell you what, Chef, and, and look at this bounty of basket behind you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. That's a uh, lot to choose from. Well, you know, from. Cisco really uh, went all out and gave us everything we really needed in order to showcase some outstanding things for you guys. We got some uh, Kentucky Proud local watermelon over there, all types of potatoes, radicchio, eggplant, summer squash, lots of herbs, pineapples, vegetables, anything you might want. Chef, actually, I see the uh, your grill smoking over here. Can we take a little peek and see what's inside? Yeah, absolutely. So what we got there is uh, just basically I've started these pineapple upside down cakes, and we got some pineapple, some gooseberries. Uh, we got it smoking over some bourbon wood chips there, a little bit of maraschino cherries, brown sugar. I'm sorry, demerara sugar, a little bit of butter. Hopefully, all of that's going to caramelize to form the crust on top of my cake. <laughs> oh, that looks good. Talk about a sweet ending. That looks absolutely fabulous. 
Looks like you got the uh, one of the secret ingredients was that honeycomb. So that's going on now. Yeah. So we're just going to put this honeycomb in here to add a little natural sweetness and also a little bit of texture. I'm going to let that melt down with my topping there. So hopefully that that comes out just now. So right for us, sir. Good luck this year. I know you're going for the win. So uh, good luck to you. All right, I'm now with uh, our other competitor. It's Reed Johnson from Wiltshire at the Speed. I'll uh, tell you what, welcome, Chef, and uh, tell us what you have going on. Uh, we kind of got a curveball going on this first course. Got some quail thrown at us. Uh, only thing better than uh, large fried chicken is tiny fried chicken. Y'all know that from the other shows we've done together. Uh, so we got a little honey glazed uh, orange blossom fried quail. We're going with uh, grilled peach and uh, tomato salad. You know, it's interesting. You're using the grill actually as a fryer. It's a direct heat source, uh, and that's the only heat source that we have out here today. Um, when I'm cooking on a pit at home, we do everything from frying on them to slow cooking uh, greens and, you know, anything else out of the garden. We have fish fries outside, open, open fire. Really, uh, it's just a good place to gather around the family. We had a good time on the grill growing up. Sundays were always big uh, grill out days. Was there a little competition between family members back then? Mostly just love. Uh, a <laughs> little bit between me and my dad, but now he normally uh, fires up the grill and uh, has a cold beer while he watches with me. So they're sitting right here in the front with us. Oh, that's great. I'll tell you what, there they are. They're, they're, uh, they're uh, rooting you on. Any uh, ideas of what you're going to do on the next course or your dessert? Uh, next course wise, obviously we're going to get into these uh, dry aged ribeyes. I've only got two bones, uh, so we'll probably grill those guys bone on, split them down. We're just going with good olive oil, salt, and pepper. Don't need anything else when you got good quality meats. I think I got a little summer uh, succotash coming at you. And uh, depending on uh, how those gooseberries cook down, we may be back in the deep fryer with some uh, s'mores fried pies for dessert. Right, All right, I'll let you get back to your work and keep cooking. Good Sounds luck. Good. Thank you, Kevin. And I'm here with Jim Lair, the owner of Brownsboro Hardware and Paint. Jim, here we are, another year. Boy, this has grown year after year. It has. Our 11th year. We're excited to be here, Kevin. Great to have you guys here. And we're having a record crowd. It's going to be great. I tell you, where else in the country can you see 100 green eggs up and running? That's right. And a great variety of food. The versatility of the green egg is incredible. The, the baked goods, the meat products, desserts, you name it. Well, we see all the folks from Cisco behind us cooking on the green eggs. The food is amazing. But that's the fact uh, is that these green eggs are versatile. You can do just about anything. That's right. I mean, you can slow smoke if you want. You can literally cook for 14 hours on one load of charcoal. But if you want to bake a pizza, if you want to do a steak, uh, cook hamburgers, brats, very, very versatile. You've been doing this event for a number of years. Why do you keep doing it? Well, at Brownsboro Hardware and Paint, we love to give back to the community. Uh, we're so supported by our customers and the community. And it's been a great event. In the last five years, we've raised over $110,000 for charity, all local charities, uh, and we just love giving back. Well over a decade ago for that first event, <laughs> did you ever think it would turn into this? Not at all. I mean, we were, we were over at the other side of the parking lot. We took up about four spaces. We had eight eggs going, and now we've turned into this with 100 eggs and uh, thousands of people. It's just a great community event. Well, we appreciate you having us out. Well, we'd great to have you here. All right, let's go back to Tim. Tim, hey. All right, back with uh, Chef Reed Johnson. I'll tell you what, coming in with uh, his dish. Tell me about this one as you're finishing it off. We've got a little fried quail uh, covered in a little orange blossom honey, orange zest. We've got some uh, really nice grilled Georgia peaches, heirloom tomatoes out of my garden, uh, a little bit of pea shoot. So it's a little twist on uh, southern fried chicken. Very nice. I'll tell you what, it looks great. Top it off with a little uh, garnish. Looks like some microgreens there. Yeah, from Waterfields Farms. Um, they do a little bit of a flower petal mix. I think it gives it a nice little essence. And then we're going to hit this with a little bit of rose crystal. It's crystallized sugar with a little bit of rose petal essence. Wow, that's going to be a different flavor component. That is interesting. A little sugar with a little bit of floral, a little bit of sweet. All right, that dish is off to the judges. They're going to dig in and then weigh in. Kevin? We have so much more to come on this special edition of Secrets Bluegrass Chefs at the Egg Fest. We got tons of secrets coming at the dessert course. It's going to be exciting. See who comes down on top among our three top chefs battling it out on their big green eggs. It's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs at the Egg Fest at Brownsboro Hardware and Paint. We'll be right back after this. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Nothing else is close. With support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. And by PNC Bank. For the achiever in you. 
to be back with you at the annual Egg Fest on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs for a Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs showdown like none other. Three top chefs going head to head, cooking an entire meal on the grill. Let's check in on the action with my broadcast partner, Tim Laird. Tim? Henry Wesley now uh, plating up his appetizer. Chef, what do we have here? So right now at the bottom we have some uh, grilled uh, grilled local watermelon, heirloom tomatoes from Forward Farms here, also local. We've got some uh, arugula, red onion. I, got, I made a quick, uh, a quick vinaigrette using the beer, a little bit of pineapple juice, a little bit of sherry vinegar. Looks like a little cheese going on, Chef. Yeah, I got a little bit of fresh mozzarella here. Now, tell me what you did with that watermelon. That looked uh, very interesting. So I used the uh, soy imperial from Bourbon Barrel Foods here in town. I soaked the watermelon in that very quickly because it has a lot of strong flavor. I didn't want to overpower the natural sweetness of the watermelon. And then I threw that on the grill to kind of accentuate some smokiness in there. That's got to be an interesting flavor. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the uh, judges are really going to enjoy that. And now he's topping it off with that uh, beautiful quail. It's come off the big green egg. A nice presentation. Very interesting appetizer. A lot of flavors going on. That's a grape seed oil extract. Grape seed oil extract. That's a final touch on that. Secrets revealed right here. I'll tell you what, Chef sharing it with you. I shared it on that last episode. I don't know if you were paying attention. Here you go, Chef. Mark Ford here from uh, Anoush Bistro has plated up the dish. Tell us about the plate up. All right, so this appetizer is a mushroom stuffed quail. These are nice wild mushrooms. Uh, we roasted them on the grill. We roasted some corn. We confit some grape tomatoes and charred some radicchio and made a little salad out of it. Then we made a basil lime uh, pesto. Nice, I'll tell you what, those flavors uh, probably go wonderful together, but I love the grill marks on the quail. Oh yeah, these green eggs were great. I mean, I mean, you want to get a, you can do anything. You can bake on them, but at the same time, you can get a really nice crust on a small bird like this, which is really actually something kind of hard to do. Yep. And it's so be hopefully, perfect. I hit the mark. We'll see what the judges have All to right. say. All right, coming in last. Don't forget the garnish. It's uh, actually going to be topped with a little bit of that quail yeah, egg. Fried quail eggs there, nice enough to give us. These things are beautiful. Cooked perfectly. Nice sunny side quail egg. You go right up on top of that quail. And I'll tell you what, you can tell just by that quail leg how perfectly cut that is. See that nice little jiggle? That's when the, beautiful. When that gets cut right into up. that, yep. that yolk is just going to cover that quail. Yep. What a nice use of the secret ingredient. Beautiful. They're going to love it. Okay, we're going to get an update from uh, Chef Reed Johnson. And uh, looks like we have a little campfire action going over here. A little uh, marshmallows? I didn't have time to make anything fancy for desserts. I thought maybe we just grill some marshmallows. A little campfire ham pies going on. Grilled marshmallow, a little baker's chocolate. So now the marshmallows go on and the uh, top of the chocolate, is that, does that get rolled up and then go onto the green egg? We are going to wind it back in the fryer for this one. Oh. I've got it back on, heating back up again. You're getting some good use out of the fryer. We got the smoke and the char on the inside and the fry on the outside. Beautiful. So I got some uh, gooseberry pineapple upside down cakes and I think they're just right, guys. So those are ready. I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. Those look absolutely fabulous. You're actually giving uh, the big green egg a big test, too. <laughs> You're testing it out, baby. Man, I'm, I like to experiment with the range of these things. So what they're good for is like acting like an oven or like a little smoker over at your house. Perfect size to do anything on. And then also, you can see over there, we got some cranked up high heat for some good grilling. So they're good for everything. Thank you, Tim. I'm with Jeremy Malone here with Cisco, and my goodness, I had a chance to go through the line like hundreds of others behind us, and what a spread you all put out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we've got uh, over 25 volunteers here today. We've spent uh, about close to 40 hours this week prepping for this event. We'll feed over 800 people tonight wow. and about uh, 1,500 pounds of food. We've got smoked duck legs here. We, oh. we did whole pulled smoked duck this morning. Uh, off of these eggs that, that smoke for about five hours. We've got prime rib, uh, we've got uh, beautiful hams, we've got turkeys, uh, you name it. If it flies, swims, uh, or, or eats grass, we've cooked it today. <laughs> even so, pizza. Even pizza, even pizza off the egg. You'd be surprised at how versatile these things are and what you can cook off of. Jeremy, we appreciate you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for supporting such a great cause. We love Cisco. Thank you, Kevin, thank you. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking on our chef showdown, and it appears we have some new dishes coming into the judges. We'll get the latest on those when Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs comes back. I feel my heart.
Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. I'm Kevin Harnett back with you for a special Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs showdown where three of Kentucky's top chefs are going at it using a big green egg to prepare an entree, an appetizer, and a dessert. On the stage right now, Henry Wesley from 8 Up. Mark Ford from Anoush Bistro, and Reed Johnson from Wilshire at the Speed Museum. Let's check in with Tim Laird with the chefs. Tim? All right, we're going to come back and check with uh, Chef Mark Ford and see what we have over here, that dry-aged beef. Dry-aged beef, cut them real nice and thick. Hopefully we'll get a perfect mid-rare on there. We're going to do a little zucchini and squash. Got some marble potatoes here. All right. So Chef Mark has his uh, steak and potatoes on, and you're also working on your dessert. Now, I saw you had a little secret to that to make uh, the dessert a little fluffier. Yeah, we used a uh, what we call an ISI charger, so mm -hmm. we carbonate it. It forces a little bit of extra air into it, and it's going to make a really nice, probably the fluffiest sponge cake you'll ever see in your life. Wow, the secret to that. I saw you shaking that up. That, uh, yeah, that's a lot of work. But it's, it's worth it. That's got to yeah. be maybe give you a little push toward the end for the dessert. Oh, absolutely. We're ready for it. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Chef. Henry Wesley is uh, plating up his entree now. Henry, tell us about the entree. You're about ready to uh, plate so up and finish up. I got some smashed confit fingerling potatoes here. We saw the potatoes. They were cooked with herbs, garlic, and chicken stock. Looking forward to getting this broccoli. He's going to go in here. I got the steak. I'm going to go with simple and just uh, simple and elegant. Hopefully I let the flavor of these uh, ingredients shine through and hopefully we have something really great here, guys. Now he's uh, slicing that wonderful dry aged beef that's incredible that Cisco provided each chef and it looks absolutely fabulous. Again, all the chefs are bringing it out medium rare. They know when they have a great cut of meat like that, you don't want to overcook it. I took some time ahead of time. It came prepared and got some uh, twice reduced veal stock in and then fortified it with some black pepper. It's going to give, give me a little bit more kick on the plate and uh, hopefully it helps to carry the steak a little bit further as far as flavor and bring out that dry age. This broccoli is going to go in here. All right, going back to the secret ingredient, here it is. Time. It's Leonardo Saba. It's uh, not often imitated, never duplicated, authentic from Italy. It's really going to bring a little bit more sweetness and a little bit more uh, umami to the plate. I like that. You always come prepared with a secret ingredient. All right, Mark Ford's uh, entree is hitting the plate. Mark, what do you have for us? All right, so we've got our 60-day dry-aged ribeye cooked mid-rare. We've got some roast, uh, grilled zucchini and squash, some roasted marble potatoes. We've got grilled asparagus, and all that is on a chili pesto. It's kind of like a uh, chili chimichurri. We've got roasted peppers, charred onions. We've got uh, shishito peppers and Fresno peppers. We uh, charred them all on the grill and then pureed them with a little bit of olive oil. Wow, and I'll tell you what. That looks absolutely perfect. When you have a great dry aged steak like this, you want it medium rare, and I can tell that's medium rare. That's gonna be great for them. They're gonna love it. A lot of smoke coming out of the grill, but you've got some smoke coming out of something that's not a grill. Yeah, we got the anti-smoke. We got steam coming off some dry ice as we're making ice cream. It's kind of like uh, you got your griddle, you got your anti-griddle. We got the anti-grill going on over here. I'll tell you what, you're smoking, chef. <laughs> we got the tools. We're going high tech here. It's amazing to see ice cream next to a hot grill, but you can do it with the Somehow dry ice. Somehow we're going to pull it off. All right. I'll tell you what. Good luck, Jeff. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Here we are with uh, Chef Reed Johnson. I'll tell you what. Uh, give us a little recap about your entree and dessert. Well, we had a um, really, really good dry aged beef to work with. Um, so with that, you know, basically pepper crusted, a uh, little bit of model and sea salt. Keep it simple. There's no need to add a lot of flavor to that. It's already in the meat. So uh, I grilled that on a little bit of apple wood um, and honestly finished it on indirect heat. Just uh, brought it on up to mid-rare and rested it. Sliced that out and fanned it. We did a little uh, summer succotash with some lima beans, uh, fresh Indiana sweet corn, some tomatoes out actually our garden at home. Uh, and then uh, topped that off with a little bit of acidic balsamic vinegar and some grape saba just to give it a little bit of acid and a little simple salad over the top, that's about it. Dessert wise, uh, kind of went back to my roots, man. My grandmother used to fry pies for me all the time when I was a kid, so uh, 
using the egg. We uh, burnt some marshmallows, stuffed them in with some chocolate, uh, deep fried those guys again off the egg using indirect heat. Um, and then topped them up with a little bit more chocolate. And I stole my girlfriend's last box of Speculose cookies. Hopefully she's not mad at me and uh, I can take a trophy home, so. And, and I'll tell you what, it was actually hand pies that was handcrafted. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if we would get that one done or not, but uh, they, they came out pretty good. Chef, good luck. I know uh, everything's been turned in, so we'll wait for the results. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Chef Mark Ford made it under the wire, got everything plated up before the countdown said zero. Tell us a little recap of what you did tonight. All right, so we had our ice cream. That was the gooseberry vanilla ice cream. We had a sponge cake uh, that we used that ISI to make. Uh, we took that honeycomb and melted it down with gooseberries. Um, and made a sauce out of that, and then we also had fresh gooseberries and a little bit of mint. All right, good luck. I know you're going for the three-peat. We'll see what happens. All right. Thank good luck. You. Behind me in these tents are the judges for today's showdown. They'll have the job of tasting the chef's creations and the challenge of choosing the best. We'll see who they will crown as the champion next on this special edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs at the annual Big Green Egg Fest. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Nothing else is close. With support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. And by PNC Bank. For the achiever in you. Welcome back, I'm Kevin Harned with Tim Laird here at the annual Big Green Egg Fest at Brownsboro Hardware and Paint. And Tim, smells delicious out here. It's time to crown a champion. I'll tell you what, this is exciting. The, uh, all the chefs laid it on the table, or should I say the grill. They're gonna make it tough for the judges tonight, but uh, I can't wait to see which chef is gonna walk away with a winner. Let's recap the dishes that each chef has turned in. Defending champion, Mark Ford from Anoush Bistro, made for his appetizer grilled quail stuffed with mushrooms and fried quail egg. His entree featured grilled ribeye with chili chimichurri, grilled zucchini, and roasted marble potatoes. And for dessert, sponge cake with gooseberry bourbon ice cream. Henry Wesley from Aid Up prepared charred quail with heirloom tomatoes and grilled watermelon for his appetizer. Ribeye with smashed marble potatoes and charred broccolini was his entree. And for dessert, it was pineapple upside down cake with gooseberries and cherries. And Reed Johnson from the Wiltshire at the Speed prepared southern fried quail with heirloom tomatoes and grilled peaches for an appetizer. The entree was blackened pepper crushed ribeye with summer succotash and aged balsamic grape saba. For dessert, a fried s'more hand pie with gooseberry sauce and whipped cream. Tim, are we ready to crown a champion? We're ready, Kevin. Thank you. Again, another close race. But this year's winner of the showdown is Chef Henry from Aid Up! Thank you guys, I appreciate it. I really do feel uh, it's a great honor. Uh, thank you guys, I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us for this special Secrets of Bluegrass Chef Showdown. A big thanks to everyone who made it possible, especially Brownsboro Hardware and Paint, Cisco, and of course, you. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin Harned for Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.